imagine what it would be like if you were to take an awesome racing game and combine it with an awesome platformer. You would have a pretty awesome game. Unfortunately for us, we're not playing an awesome game. No, we're playing this piece of shit. Crash Tag Team Racing was the first of three Crash games to be developed by Radical Entertainment, and boy does it show. Crash to Insanity was a step in the right direction. After the mediocre games of the early PS2, to Insanity showed that Crash wasn't dead. This game, though, feels like the biggest step backwards. From what I can gather, this game's story takes place after Crash to Insanity's. We see a man named Ebenezer Von Clutch, owner of an amusement park called Von Clutch's Motor World. He is joined by one of his friends, Pasadena Opossum, and the park's mascot, Willy Wampa Cheeks. Von Clutch is part cyborg and has an energy source called the Black Power Gem. Von Clutch's Black Power Gem has been stolen and he is running out of time. If his Power Gem isn't found soon, he will die. Von Clutch holds a competition. Whoever can find his Black Power Gem will win the deed to the park. Oh, and there's something about racing in there too. Tag Team Racing is part platformer and part kart racer. Now, in theory, this idea sounds pretty interesting. But really, you can make anything interesting, as long as it's executed properly. The real question is... Was this executed properly? No, GOD! This game starts out with a lengthy tutorial, but it can be skipped. Although, I do need to ask... Why is the camera Never mind. Crash's controls in this game feel bizarre and awkward. Landing jumps can be annoying, but it also feels like there's a slight delay in my jumps. When I run towards the edge of a platform and prepare to do a double jump, my jump doesn't activate in time and I end up falling off. This has happened too many times to count. Not to mention, you'll be spending a lot of time on foot in this game. Your goal in this game is to collect crystals. You can earn crystals by buying them from park workers. How do you pay for them? By collecting Wampa Tokens. Wampa Tokens are found all over the ground. However, you can also collect crystals and Wampa Tokens by competing in races. More on those later. After you collect a set number of crystals, you open a jump pad, which can be used to access the gem. By collecting gems, you can unlock new parks to go to. There are five parks in total. There's Mystery Island, Happily Ever Faster, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Tombtown, and Astroland. While collecting Wampa Tokens on the ground definitely works, and you can get plenty of crystals by buying them, the ideal way to get them is by competing in races, which are also the only fun thing to do in this game. In the races, you have eight characters to choose from. You have Crash, Cortex, Pasadena, Von Clutch, Coco, Nina, Engine, and Crunch. Each of the characters differ in that they each have different weapons when clashed. Yes, this game has a unique mechanic called clashing. By pressing the triangle button when near an opponent, your carts will combine. One player will take the driver's seat, and the other will man the vehicle's weapon. You can switch whenever you want between driver and gunner, and when playing as gunner, you can switch between your own weapon and your teammate's weapon. It's a very unique mechanic that adds a form of variety. Who you clash with is important. Who you play as is important. However, the weapons of this game don't feel particularly balanced. Some weapons are marginally better than others. Some, like Nina's shotgun or engine's missile launcher, are overpowered as fuck. Meanwhile, characters like Cortex and Von Clutch's weapons are absolutely worthless. While it can be fun to go as a single rider, the best way to play is by being clashed. When clashed, you and your teammate can power through the race, quickly. This makes the races incredibly easy, even on the hardest difficulty. As long as you stick with Nina's shotgun, you can pretty much just say SHUT THE FUCK UP to anyone who tries to cross you. However, despite the races being easy, I still enjoyed them. It's fun to just go on a power craze sometimes. However, I'm not sure that's what the developers intended. If that was the case, then they wouldn't make weapons fucking useless like Cortexes. When you complete races, you are awarded two crystals and a certain number of tokens, which depends on how many people you killed in the race. However, playing the races alone isn't enough to get by. You also need to play a number of challenges within the races too, which are incredibly boring. There's the Crashinator challenge, in which your goal is to crash into as many obstacles as possible. There's the Run and Gun challenges, in which you have to shoot flying targets. Rolling Thunder involves you racing as the character of your choice with unlimited ammo, trying to gun down as many cars as possible. The challenges, especially the Rolling Thunder ones, are all incredibly easy and don't require an ounce of skill. The only challenge that's remotely difficult are the Fast Lap challenges, in which you have to race as fast as you can against the clock. Then we have the Battle Arenas, which involve you gunning down other Clash carts. Yeah, because there wasn't enough of that already! And there are also Stunt Arenas. Okay, maybe I'm doing something wrong here, but... I find the stunt arenas to be incredibly boring. In stunt arenas, you can perform tricks for points. You can perform tricks by rotating the left and right analog sticks. I swear I'm doing something wrong because I can't do a single trick that isn't rolling around in some odd pattern. See, with stunts in a lot of games, every single button does a different move. But here, all you do is roll! I've tried 
tried mashing buttons to see if I missed something, but I couldn't pull off a single trick outside of rolling in circles. However, the races are awesome. The power craze feeling of them makes them exciting already, but there are a number of mechanics that make it even more fun. You can pick up items to throw at your opponents, which, if you are the gunner, can be intercepted. There's also a boost meter. You can fill your boost meter by eliminating other players and drifting. When the meter is full, you are awarded with a powerful boost once you hit the circle button. Of course, with how fun the races are, you'd expect me to call this a good game, but the races are overwhelmed by the terrible platforming levels. In order to unlock characters and cars to race in, you need to complete missions in the overworlds. These usually involve finding a collectible hidden somewhere on the map, or retrieving a certain number of coins or crystals. There are three tiers of cars you can unlock for each character. After you gain all the cars, you can upgrade their weapons. Honestly, don't bother with the weapon upgrades. The only weapons worth upgrading are Ninas and Engines, and their vanilla weapons are good enough to get by anyway. This game doesn't offer any real sort of engaging replay value. True, this game does have many missions to do after you're done with the initial story, but it doesn't serve as replay value. Keep in mind, replay is half of the term, the other half is value. That's why gems count as replay value and relics don't. To be fair, not all games need something to do after the story mode. Replay value is important in games like CTR, because CTR's story mode is particularly short, however, it had much more to keep players entertained after they were done with the story. But it may be a different case with a game like Crash of the Titans, because the story mode is considerably long. This is not the case with Tag Team Racing. The story mode of this game is very short, and you can probably complete it in three hours or less. The only remotely fun thing to do outside of the single player is its multiplayer. The multiplayer of this game is awesome. It's fun to both compete against your friend, but also team up with them and go through the entire race clashed. While this game does have some good gameplay, specifically in the multiplayer modes, it lacks in presentation. And I mean really lacks. In fact, in this aspect, it could rival Wrath of Cortex. Yeah, I know, that's a strong insult, but really, just look at this game. The graphics are atrocious. Look at Crash's model! He doesn't even have individual fingers! This game also uses some really shitty-looking particle effects. And there's also the Ninja Penguins. Oh, Jesus Christ, the goddamn Ninja Penguins. I've heard that this game was rushed, but honestly, it looks like it was more unfinished. Also, I want you to keep something in mind. This game came out in... 2005? 2005? Are you kidding me? Th okay, to put it in perspective, Half-Life 2? 2004. Ratchet and Clank 3? 2004. Crash Tag Team Racing? 2005. Now, if that isn't fucking top quality, then I don't know what is. Now that's top quality! Thank you, Patrick. Another flaw with this game are its characters. I don't want to delve too far into the characters, as I plan on doing that more in my Titans review. The characters of this game are not very likable. This would be the start of the big redesign that got all the 12-year-old boys' panties in a twist. Lex Lang is pretty good in this game, but everyone else is just annoying. Crash now speaks in some sort of blabbering, and good fucking god is he annoying! What the hell was Radical thinking? He's not endearing, he's not cute, he's not funny, he's obnoxious and idiotic. The characters' personalities have also been altered so that Radical can make some shitty jokes. Engine is voiced by Nolan North and turned awfully... gray. They didn't change his design like in Titan, so he doesn't look as different as much as he does just... bland. Crunch has also been turned into a bad Mr. T parody. See, this could be funny, but instead they just make him say, CRASH OF A BROTHER OUT 20 times in a row and expect all the kids to laugh. Titans would end up fixing most of the problems that this game's characters had, but we're not reviewing Titans right now, we're reviewing Crash Tag Team Racing, and these characters are incredibly annoying. The new characters aren't very memorable either. People constantly bash <laughs> on Rilaru because he was a one-trick pony. But you know what? At least he wasn't fucking annoying as shit like Pasadena or Von Clutch. I wouldn't spend so much time complaining about the characters of this game if it weren't for the fact that the slightest push of the analog stick will trigger the stupidest fucking one-liner I've ever heard in my entire goddamn life. You make engine laugh. Oh, come back. Yes, we do, dude. Reset your car so I can do that again. Such a tragedy! <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! The soundtrack of this game is okay, I guess. It's got some incredibly badass songs, but also some incredibly shitty ones. The soundtrack has been co-composed by Spiralmouth and Mark Barrel. Spiralmouth is the group that did Crash for Insanity's music, and I've already explained why Spiralmouth annoys me. The other composer is Mark Barrel, who would later compose the entire soundtrack for Crash of the Titans and Crash Mind Over Mutant. And I really like this guy's work on Mind Over Mutants. Pretty much everything he does in this game sounds nice. It's Spiralmouth that's annoying. 
Some songs are incredibly annoying, like Dead Heat. At the same time, this game has one of the best songs I've ever heard in a Crash game, which I'm gonna play over the ending because it's just so fucking awesome. Crash Tag Team Racing has some fantastic racing. The single player races are fun by themselves, but what's incredibly awesome is the multiplayer. However, while the racing is a lot of fun, it is overwhelmed by the boring platform segments, irritating soundtrack, annoying characters, ugly graphics, and lack of engaging replay value. I'm sorry, because I do know that a lot of people like this game, but honestly, it's really weak. Both as a standalone title and especially as a follow-up to Crash to Insanity. Crash Tag Team Racing is a mediocre game. Anyways, tune in next time when I tackle the series reboot that would change the way we looked at Crash Bandicoot as I review Crash of the Titans. Shut the fuck up, fat man. This ain't none of your goddamn business.